there are a few simple to fix mistakes that you might have on the throttle that can gain you lots of lap time and consistency in F1 2020. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing those mistakes, what they look like, why they are so important, and most importantly, how to fix them so you can be faster in F1 2020. The most common mistakes that we see on the throttle is when a driver will be way too aggressive when they're getting on the gas. And even if they're using traction control or not spinning the car out entirely, they will be lowering the amount of grip the car's got and this will mean that their lap time is significantly slower. When you're aggressive on the accelerator, it shifts the balance of the car very violently and lowers the overall grip of the car. It can cause understeer and sometimes oversteer in F1 2020. You can likely tell if you're too aggressive on the accelerator if you're having to lift off as you exit the corner. So what exactly is going on when you get on the throttle too aggressively? Well, think about what's going on with the suspension and the dynamics of the car. If you smash the accelerator, the car will lurch forward, it will accelerate quite quickly, but what actually happens with the suspension is the weight of the car will move back quite quickly. It will move away from the front, so the front of the car will rise up, and those front tires will be pushed into the track less hard than they were previously. This means that they then have less grip and less turning ability, meaning the car will likely understeer on the way out of the corner. The other problem with being aggressive on the throttle is that the platform of the car, the balance between the front and the rear axles is shifting very quickly. Now this has a number of problems. It makes the car more difficult to drive because the grip is shifting from front to rear very quickly, but it also reduces the overall amount of grip. This means that you can't go through the corner quite as quickly and therefore your lap time will be increased. So what does it look like when you do this right? Well, in general, you want to be nice and smooth when you're initially getting on the accelerator. This way, the weight moves around the car in a more smooth way, and we're not shocking the car when we're trying to get it to accelerate out of the corner. An easy way to think about this is imagine if there is some string going from the top of the steering wheel down to the throttle pedal. And as you open up the steering wheel, you can press the accelerator further down. So when you're at the apex and you have the maximum steering angle in the car, you need to be super smooth on the throttle. And then as the car opens up and is heading in more of a straight line, you can press that accelerator harder and use more of the tire's grip for acceleration rather than turning. The next problem that we see with a lot of drivers is that they have the belief that they either need to be maximum on the brakes or maximum on the accelerator with no gap in between the two inputs. While this may feel like it's the fastest way around the circuit, it certainly isn't, and you'll actually be reducing the amount of grip that the car has. You can tell when a driver is doing this because they will tend to stab the accelerator pedal. You'll see the driver entering the corner, releasing the brakes, and then straight away getting back on the throttle pedal. This in turn causes the car to step off the racing line, running wide, and then most likely the driver will have to lift back off the accelerator again to make sure they don't run off the track. So again, it's really important that you understand the dynamics of the car and what's going on physically. In simple terms, a tire's grip can be used for a number of things. Braking, turning, or acceleration, or a slight blend of two of these things. We have a video that goes into much more detail on the Driver61 channel about the traction circle, but in simple terms, think about it like this. If we're trying to slow a car down as quickly as we can into a braking zone, we brake in a straight line, and that way the tyres grip can be used entirely for slowing the car down and not turning. If you were to add even the tiniest amount of steering angle, some of that tyres grip would be used for turning the car rather than slowing it down, and so it would be less efficient. Well, the same is true when you're at the apex. If any of the tyres grip is used for deceleration or acceleration, we're taking the tyres grip away from turning. And so there should be a small period during the middle of the corner where you're just coasting or maintaining the speed of the car. And this way, the tyres grip can be used for maximum turning grip. 
For many corners, after releasing the brakes and beginning to turn the car into the corner, you'll want to use the tyres grip entirely for turning. And so this means a small period where we're either coasting or we're very gently on the accelerator just to maintain the speed, not to accelerate. Then once you're somewhere around the apex of the corner, you'll want to gently increase the accelerator as you open up the steering angle and you transfer some of the tyres grip into acceleration rather than turning. The next big issue we see on the throttle costing drivers lots of lap time is simply getting on the accelerator too early. You can tell when a driver is doing this because they'll begin to understeer at the apex of the corner. The car will wash out towards the exit of the corner prematurely and likely the driver will have to lift off the accelerator so they don't run off the track. So what's going on here? Well, when the driver gets on the accelerator too early, the weight shifts to the rear of the car too early, the front becomes light again, and therefore we don't have enough grip to go around the corner. But what's going on with the driver? Well, typically this comes because the driver isn't looking far enough ahead. They're not getting good visual information from the track. And even though they might have done hundreds of laps on a particular circuit, you still need to be looking through a corner. The drivers that make these mistakes are looking down at the nose of the car, only a few meters ahead of the car, which is nowhere near enough. As a rule of thumb, you want to be looking at least one to two seconds ahead of where the car is positioned at any one point. When you're in the braking zone, you need to be looking at the apex and the exit of the corner. And when you're just coming up to the apex, you definitely need to be looking toward the exit of the corner. That way you can map out your racing line much more effectively and you also know when to release the brakes and then get back on the throttle. So what does it look like when you get this right? Well, when you're in the braking zone, you'll be looking down at the apex so you know where to position the car. Then as you begin to release the brakes and enter the corner, you'll want to gently pick up the throttle just before, at, or just after the apex, depending on the corner type. If you're able to get on the throttle long before the apex of the corner, you've definitely gone into the corner too slowly and you'll likely pay the price on the exit through understeering wide of the corner. If you want to continue to get faster in F1 2020, check out these other videos that I've put together to lower your lap time and make you more consistent. And don't forget to subscribe to the Driver61 Sim Racing channel. Cheers and I'll see you next time.